In this video we're going to talk about reaction rates. And exactly as it sounds, a reaction rate is how quickly a reaction takes place. Now to kind of put a bit of a finer point on that, we have to be able to measure something in order, in order to tell how quickly a reaction is going. And so the way that we do that is we can measure the concentration change um, of either a product or a reactant with respect to time. Because remember, what basically reactions are doing is they're, uh, the reactants are getting used up and they're being used to make products. So you can measure the rate of a reaction by looking to see how much products get made in a certain amount of time, or you could conversely look at how much reactants get used up in a certain amount of time. So because we're talking about molar concentration, the units of this are typically in units of molar per second. And if you remember, molar is the same thing as moles per liter, and so we can also put seconds on the bottom, and then we get the same thing. So molar per second or moles per liter per second. Now, it's also very common when you want to denote the molar concentration of something, like, for example, the molar concentration of X, we would denote whatever. It could be anything. It could be the molar concentration of any reactant or any product. We tend to denote this by putting the X whatever it is into brackets and this tells you that the value that we're looking at is the molar concentration so we put it into brackets now let's look at a simple reaction where we have uh, something like A goes to B and this could be anything but a good example is uh, the decomposition of ethanol to acet aldehyde in the human body and the enzyme that facilitates this is called alcohol dehydrogenase. And so the reason why this is a good example is because obviously, you know, knowing the, the metabolism for alcohol um, oxidation is important, you know, uh, for a variety of things. This is very common when people talk about, you know, it takes about one hour per to metabolize uh, an equivalent of one drink's worth of alcohol. Um, knowing that rate is really important because you want to know, um, you know, depending on how much you drink, you want to know how long you would have to wait to be safe in order to drive a car, for example. And another, for the biologists, another important thing that um, should be considered here is the biological differences between men and women um, in terms of the alcohol dehydrogenase enzyme concentration and how quickly this gets broken down. So these are all really important. The reaction rates in kinetics are really important um, for chemistry and for biology for these reasons, um, because this has a lot to do with enzymes, for example. So for example, if we were to look at this, um, what we could do is we could make a graph over here where we have concentration on the left. And I denote concentration generally. Um, this could be concentration of either the products or the reactants. And I have time on the bottom. And this would be in seconds, because that's the standard unit. Now, uh, for the products, the products are going to, we're going to start this reaction with 100% A, and then as time goes on, we're going to start to make some B. So let's start with the reactants first. So we're going to start with a certain amount of reactants up here, and then as time goes on, those reactants are going to go away, and their concentration is going to decrease as we make products. And for the products, we're going to start with no products at time zero, and those are going to grow in, and we're going to get products over here as time goes on. And you'll notice that these, these graphs are just mirror images of each other, which makes sense because as I take a little bit of A away, by stoichiometry, I have to make exactly the same amount of B. So if I take one mole of A away, I've ha I have to make one mole of B. So that's why these things look like a mirror image. And so we can say that this is the trace for the concentration of, a, of B, and this is the trace for the concentration of A, with reactants coming in and products going away. So now let's look at the let's look at what a rate is in terms of um, writing a uh, writing this as an equation. So when we want to write a rate, we can basically say that rate is equal to the change in the concentration of A with respect to the change in time. And uh, in this case, the little d's here this can be thought of as instead of the derivative d. We could think of this as the change in the concentration of A versus the change in concentration of time. Now, what the D stands for is this is the derivative. And the derivative is an instantaneous measurement of the rate of change of one thing with respect to time. 
But since you guys have not necessarily all had calculus yet, a very simple way to think of this is instead of using the little d's, you can substitute those d's as deltas, which is you know the concentration at time two minus the concentration at time one divided by the time at time two minus the time at time one. Uh, and it gives you basically the same idea. That, that's the same thing as a rate. Now let's compare the rate of A to the rate of B. So that's kind of the next thing that we're going to look at. So in our graph, we notice that the rate of A is going away. So the concentration of A decreases with time. So in this case, the rate is going to equal minus the concentration of DA versus DT. Now the reason why we put the minus sign here is because reactants are consumed. So if we go back and we look at the graph, you'll notice that the rate here for A is going to be negative because we're going down in concentration versus time. So we account for that. We can't have a negative rate. The, the reaction is not going to go backwards. Although when we get to equilibrium, you can kind of, that kind of gets a little bit more complicated. But in essence, the rate in this case is going to get a minus sign for the reactants because the reactants are consumed. And for the products, where we have rate is equal to D times the concentration of B over DT, this is going to get a positive because products are being made. So that's how we can kind of think about that. Um, we can kind of think about that as the disappearance of a reactant or the appearance of a product. Now, let's look at a little bit more closely at a kind of a more complex reaction that involves um, some stoichiometry. So let's take a look at a reaction where we have uh, not just a one-to-one -one ratio, but we have some stoichiometry going on here. So we have 2HI gas goes to H2 gas plus I2 gas. Now, we know that in this case, there's a little bit more, things are a little bit more complicated because in this case, we're making two products, and the ratio of these products are one-to-one. -one. So we know that whenever we make one molecule of H2, we're going to make one molecule of I2. And whenever we make one molecule of H2 and one molecule of I2, we're going to consume two molecules of HI. So now let's start to think about this graphically. So if we were to draw a graph for this one, and we were to start with our HI. Well, our HI is going to go down. So this is going to be time on the bottom in seconds. This is going to be concentration in molar. And let's just sort of get our HI up here. And so our HI is going to go down and kind of go away. And this is going to be our concentration of HI. That's our reactant. Now the question is, is what is the rate of the HI with respect to the rate of the H2 and the I2? Well, one thing that we can automatically do is we can kind of think at the end of this thing, how much I2 and how much H2 are we going to have? Well, let's say that just for, let's just say for simplicity's sake, that this is 2 molar. And the reason why this is for simplicity's sake is because we know that if we have 2 molar of HI, then at the very end of the reaction, we have to wind up with 1 molar of H2 and I2 because the ratio here is 2 to 1. So we can draw in a trace for our products where this could be the concentration of H2, and this is going to be the same thing for the concentration of I2. And you'll notice that we use up twice as much of the HI relative to the, the products that we form. And let's just assume that that, let me just correct this HI so that it goes down to zero, um, just so that, that, that it's correct. So this HI is going to merge with the zero at, at the same point in time as we get enough H2 and I2. And that's just for stoichiometry, right? So if we use up all two moles, two molar of the HI, we're going to make all one molar of the H2 and the I2. So knowing this, we can start to think about what's going to happen with the rates. Now, this is just from stoichiometry. This endpoint comes from stoichiometry. And we know that because for every two moles of HI we use, that's going to give us one mole of H2, and it's also going to give us one mole of I2. So it makes sense that for every two, mole, two molar of the HI we use, we're going to make one molar of those two separate products. And that's how we can kind of come up with this trace here. But let's think about the rate. So in the same amount of time, we use up twice as much HI as we use H as we make H2 and I2. So what is that going to mean in terms of the rates? Well, what that means is that the rate in which the HI is going to get used up is going to be twice as fast 
as the rate at which the H2 and the I2 are produced, right? Because by stoichiometry, we, we can kind of see that. So when we write out the rate equation, so if we want to write the rate of the change in HI with respect to time, we know that this is a reactant, so it's going to get a minus. And we know that this is going to be twice as fast as the production of H2 and I2. Because in the same amount of time, we produce only half as much H2 or half as much I2. So in this case, we could basically say that the rate in this case, um, to get these things to be equal, one half of the rate of HI, uh, HI's disappearance, is going to be the same thing as the rate of appearance of H2 versus time. And that's going to be a positive because it's a product. And it's going to be the same thing as the rate of appearance of I2 with respect to time. So essentially what we're saying here is that the HI is going to get used up twice as fast. Or to make it equivalent, we have to half that rate, which is twice as fast, to get it to be the same thing as the rate of appearance of H2 and I2. So the reason why we're kind of going over this is because this is the effect of stoichiometry. on rate. And so you can kind of make these predictions based on the stoichiometry. So uh, we make the prediction that HI is going to go twice as fast as the, um, the consumption of HI is going to go twice as fast as the, uh, as the appearance of H2 and I2. So let's just do another little example of that. So let's say that, for example, we have 2NO2, uh, in this case, plus F2 gives 2NO2 F. And these are all gases. And now let's start to think about the rates here for this one. So if we look at the rates, we know that in this case, the rate is going to equal, so the rate for NO2 is going to equal D times the concentration of NO2 versus DT. And we put a minus sign there because it is uh, a reactant and it's going away. Now let's think about the how to make the rate of uh, what the relative rates of the NO2 and the F2 are. So for the NO2 uh, and the F2, we need two NO2s for every one F2. So as this reaction proceeds, the rate of NO2 consumption is going to be twice as fast as the rate of F2 consumption. So what we can say is that the rate of NO2 consumption relative to the rate of F2 consumption, we're going to have to put a one-half in front of the uh, we're going to have to put a minus one half in front of the NO2 in order to get that to be the same as the rate for the F2 versus DT because the NO2 is going to get used up twice as fast. So to make those equal, we have to put a half in front of the one that's going faster. And then we can say the same thing for the rate of the NO2F. So in this case, the rate of the NO2F, D times the concentration of NO2F divided by DT, this is going to be a positive because it's being... Uh, produced, so we flip the sign. And in this case, this is going to be going at the same rate. These two are going to be going at the same rate because they're linked by stoichiometry. So again, we're going to have to put a one half here to make them all equivalent because this is going to go twice as fast as the F2 in terms of the production. So you can see how these things are related to each other, the rates, and it depends on the, um, it depends a little bit on the, what's going on with the stoichiometry. So in the next video, we're actually going to discuss the two major types of rates, average rates versus instantaneous rates.